goes to show how important and how popular food is that we can fill two events, not just one, which is great. Um, I've got you know, 10 minutes, it's not very long. Um, in fact, it's very short. I used to make a living as a lecturer, so 10 minutes is actually, it's like, you know, that. So I'm under pressure now. Um, sorry. It's all right. Okay, so system change, not climate change, uh, is the title of the, the talk that um, I'm, I'm going to give. And uh, essentially, it's a kind of whistle stop tour uh, around systems thinking uh, and how it relates to the food system and transforming it in Sheffield. Um, you know, Chef Food is the food partnership, and uh, essentially, it's been going for eight or ten years, uh, and it involves you know lots of different people and organisations who are passionate about food and who want to create a more sustainable food system uh, for the city. Um, sustainable Food Cities is the national movement of food partnerships. So there's actually 70 cities all across the UK um, who, who buy into uh, the idea of a food partnership. And uh, Sustainable Food Cities essentially uh, supports uh, what we're doing uh, across um, both our city and, and as a, a, a nationwide movement. Um, so there's uh, lots of different organisations, but there's a few of the key organisations there. Uh, as Chris mentioned, uh, I'm, I'm from Regather, which uh, some of you might have heard of, uh, and we do lots of good stuff, uh, some of which I will touch on uh, in the talk today. Um, but there's a whole range of different organisations that are involved, some of which are represented here, which is great. Um, so uh, essentially, you, you know, the idea of a food partnership is that it brings lots of different stakeholders together uh, and really gets to grips with food policy. And you know, cities typically might have a food strategy, uh, which uh, is a, you know, a document, uh, a, a living, working document, but also uh, an action plan uh, that is all about making things happen around food sustainability. And uh, a, key, a key role for Chef Food uh, is about influencing the Sheffield context with that in mind. Okay, So the policy context, the practice context, uh, you know, how it is that the food system uh, exists. Uh, we do a lot of campaigning, uh, things like veg cities uh, and, and food power. And uh, uh, do you like the picture? Yeah, we've got these lovely letters uh, uh, done on a flatbed uh, CNC machine and then coloured them in. They look great, very pleased about those. Okay, so I'm going to whistle stop through food systems, something called values-based food chains, a uh, quick couple of case studies, uh, tell you about the crisis that's happening around land, work and inputs, uh, and hopefully wrap it all up with a, something around integrated urban agriculture, so you know, where, where are we heading? And hopefully that will sort of segue nicely into um, other, other people's talks as well. So this is like uh, super quick uh, food systems. So as you can see there, that's a, a beautifully simplified, circular, closed loop system um, of, of you know, what food systems might look like. Uh, I'm being slightly glib there because obviously food systems are not that simple and currently they're definitely not closed loop. Okay, but this model does help us understand um, how you know, the food system is made up of elements uh, and together, you know, working, they make uh, the food system operate. And uh, you can move on to something a little bit more complex, a little bit more detailed. And uh, what you've got here are some of those similar elements, but a few kind of sub-elements or precursors, prerequisites, uh, all of which start to give us an idea of uh, not just which parts of the food system uh, exist and how they you know, may or may not relate to one another, but actually you know, what the food system requires to get going. But this one is by far and away my favourite. Um, so this is a much more complex system model uh, of, of not just the food system, but how a collection of systems you know, are made up together, that, you know, working feed us uh, as, as humans on the, on the planet. Uh, and, and this is definitely an ideal model um, because uh, it doesn't really exist like this, sadly. Um, uh, but it does help us start to understand how the food system operates. So this kind of food systems thinking is, is integral to how Chef Food, as a food partnership for Sheffield, but also other food partnerships work. We've got to have that depth of understanding about how the food system operates before we can really start to think about you know, changing it and what those levers for, for change are. Oh, wrong button. Let's keep going this way. Okay, so the food systems approach, uh, you know, obviously it's about food provision, getting food onto the, onto the plate, 
uh, and, and into our bellies, very important. Okay? Never forget that, that's what actually matters, eating it. Okay. Uh, but it's also got a whole range of different dimensions, not just about the food provision. Um, and uh, increasingly, as well as the kind of regular ones, social, economic, environmental and so on, uh, it's got a digital dimension. You know, food definitely has a, a digital dimension uh, going forward. Uh, we'll touch on that in a bit. Uh, a particular concept that I like, food sheds. Uh, so it's kind of like a watershed. So it's the carrying capacity of an area in order to produce a certain amount of food for a population. So we talk about food sheds uh, in relation to the geography. Uh, and the productive capacity of, a, of an area. And even more, uh, I think, my favourite, is the idea of breaking down the food system into a, a collection of flows. So food is not a thing. Food is a flow. Okay? It's a flow of carbon, water, nutrients, uh, power and influence, money, okay? a whole range of constituent parts that make up what food is and what it represents and how we have to think about it. Okay, so it's not just a thing, it's a flow. So a really important concept building on this food systems thinking is the values-based food chain. Uh, and this is something that is very important to us at, at Regather. So essentially it starts to think about the values that are integral and intrinsic to how a particular food system can operate. And uh, you know, it thinks about producers as strategic partners, not as interchangeable input suppliers. Okay? So this is starting to move away from how mainstream food systems currently operate and moving into what might be called like alternative food systems. Okay? And essentially our customers in these sorts of situations are after a particular values-based offer. Okay? So for example, fairness, fair trade, <coughs> provenance, so knowing where the food comes from, and a particular set of food standards that govern how that food is produced. And this is a big debate you know, in a post-Brexit environment uh, when we're talking about chlorinated chicken and, and things like that. So why the focus on values-based food chains? So the key thing to get here okay, is that there's the food system as a whole, but then there's food chains. And every time we eat, the buffet we had this evening okay, was a collection of food chains that put that food into those packages, that bought it here today. And each time we eat a meal, we make a set of decisions some informed, some not, some out of choice, some out of necessity. But essentially, that little chain of activity drills all the way down to the food that we eat at that particular moment. And we as consumers have the ability to change how that chain uh, is configured. Uh, and the basis on that is then changing how the food system works as well. So values-based food chains uh, and food chains in general, they're the drivers of change within, within a food system. So the Regather box is an example of a values-based food chain. Okay, we're bringing in produce from growers, some of which are in Sheffield, some of which are further afield. Okay, but it's a section, a collection of uh, values in action, if you like. Okay, I'm not, I've not got time to go into that in too much detail. I want to contrast that with another values-based food chain example, which is Fresh Street. So this is a, 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 a cash transfer voucher system that puts money into households in deprived areas of the city and gives them the opportunity to make choices about the food that they're eating that they might not otherwise be able to make. Again, essentially it's about increasing access to fresh fruit and veg. So it's about a particular intervention, but importantly, that intervention configures a food chain uh, and enables those households to, to, to think about accessing a different uh, food chain and therefore a different part of the food system. Okay, so we, we believe in food chains as, as the drivers for change in the food system. So this graphic uh, starts to kind of mesh together a whole bunch of different stuff, okay? Some food systems thinking, uh, but also some of the operational activities are, are, of, of Regather, okay? So these are different sites around the city, some of which are operational, some of which are, are, are aspirational, if you like. But essentially, the proposition we're making here is that you can configure food chains and then influence the food system. Uh, and this is all about local food production, primarily. Okay, so we're facing a crisis, you see, because uh, there's a, a quick list here, uh, and they're, they're broadly uh, estimated figures, they're, not, they're not, not too bad, okay, but if you take this collection of local food production sites, some of which aren't actually operational currently, you're still only talking about 35.3 acres of land, okay, so we're facing a land supply crisis, okay? if we're talking about local food production, if we want to increase the quantity of locally grown produce, at a, at a market kind of commercial level, you know, we need more access to land. We're also facing a labour supply crisis. 
Okay? So even if we had enough land, we've got to have the people with the right skills and the right training that support those skills and bring those people into work that is you know, necess necessary for a local food system to operate. Okay? And at the moment, you can't access that sort of training opportunity in Sheffield. Okay? It's in very short supply. And we're facing an input crisis, okay? Because you know, even if you've got the land, you've got the skilled labour, you've got to think about all those inputs that go into food production, okay? So some here, water, soil, light and heat, chemicals. You know, some of these, we are facing a, a, an environmental uh, catastrophe, essentially, uh, that is undermining the ability of these inputs to, 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 to actually sustain food supply in, in a way that we need them to, okay? So uh, in, in an urban setting, we've got to think about where other inputs might come into play. Okay, so around water, for example, rainwater harvesting, grey water reuse, uh, around soil, so thinking about soilless growing, uh, how we might produce and import certain types of soil, uh, using anaerobic digestion to, in order to produce uh, growing substrates, uh, and closed loop around waste management, and things like light and heat, so bringing in sources of, of urban heat of urban and urban produced electricity, urban CO2, uh, and they essentially work towards something that we can broadly call fully integrated urban agriculture. And so, you know, how does that look on that food system model? So, you know, let's pull heat out of a district heating network. Let's pull heat out of, uh, you know, places where heat is essentially a, a waste product, a byproduct of, of processes. Let's reuse water in different ways. Let's look at sources of CO2 in the urban ecosystem and bring those into horticultural uh, food production, controlled environment agriculture settings. Uh, let's think about using light. Uh, so turning electricity into light and light into food. Uh, so extending the growing seasons uh, and not just indoor growing but supplementing outdoor growing situations. Uh, thinking about how you know, we can produce soil in, in urban settings and the role of data in amongst all of this as well. So looking at how you know, data is increasingly instrumental in understanding how the food system operates, what we can do to change it, and the impacts those changes might have. Okay, and the, the potential is, is uh, huge. And that's the end of my talk. Thank you very much.